All right, so knuckle flexors on the cello now, or the bass. Um, bass, again, this is a point where you might need to talk to your teacher about some specific things. We have a little bit of a larger motion on the bass. We're going to use a lot more arm to do this, um, and it's going to be a lot bigger. Now, cellists, we can learn from them, they can learn from us, but we do have to do something a little more specific. So, cellists, this is for you. We've been doing the knuckle flexor activity. If you haven't done knuckle flexor video number one, I recommend doing that first. We did it on our arm. What we were learning how to do was how to straighten and crouch those knuckles in our vibrato motion. So we're going to now put that on the cello. Notice I went right to the neck block. This is because it's a much more comfortable place to work on vibrato. You're just in a more, um, well, you're in a lower position with your arm. So you aren't having to balance so much. So just relax. Let this drop down. I don't care what note that is. I'm not even going to touch the bow right now. So what I'm doing now is I've got my thumb braced on the neck block and I'm going to do one finger at a time and gently do some of that flexing we were doing before where my knuckle straightens and then crouches up. All right. So one finger at a time. But what's happening is now we can imagine how this vibrato motion can actually affect each finger. So I can actually play notes and do vibrato, not just sliding around all over the place. So we are now planting that fingertip. The fingertip is stuck to that point. The thumb is stuck to that point but my arm is going to try and do vibrato. The trick is, if your knuckles are flexy, you can still move. If your knuckles are locked, you won't be able to move. All right. With the pinky, I find it is very helpful to fall back on um, a little bit more of that arm motion. It might feel a little bit more like twisting a doorknob um, I don't really want it to be tiny. Try to get it into the arm. All right, so it's a big door. First finger, same thing. I feel like that one, I can do quite a lot of that doorknob motion in my hand, but look, it's all the way back here. And yes, my knuckles are stretching out and bunching up. Whoops. All right. Gradually, you're going to want to move that way because, well, as much as third position is lovely or fourth position is lovely, it would be nice to do vibrato up there too. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it back gradually. You can even do it like this. Start out here and then just start letting your thumb move back. Take a break. I always like this stretch. Just put your hand behind your back like this. That's a nice stretch. All right. And then go again. Maybe go on a different string. So I'm trying to get my knuckles to flex. I'm going to do all the fingers. This time I'm doing two. I can go all the way up and down. All right, so do all the fingers, all the strings. And oh, the pinky. Oh, yes, of course. I'm going to be nice to the pinky and do the pinky on the A string. Yeah. If you get knuckle buckles, remember, if you do that, the trick is to just shrink that motion down. Don't make it quite so big. Little ones. And then move it back to first position. 
All right. Um, when you can do your pinky on the C string, whoa, then you know you're tough. Okay, cool. So, um, so that is the beginnings of knuckle flexors and getting us to play some actual pitches centered while doing vibrato. So enjoy practicing that.